participation in designing interactive public art. She holds an MFA from Cranbrook Academy of Art with a focus in metalsmithing and architecture. Zoll Studio is a certified woman-owned business and is located in Sobro here in Indianapolis. Welcome, Lauren. Hey guys, great to be here. How's the sound? Can you hear me? Okay. So I am an artist and I spend most of my time designing my art. I'm here to talk about public interactive art and I'll be introducing a project to you called Bending Light, Diploma La Luz. This is in Shelton Heights Park in Indianapolis and I encourage you all to go out there. It's a great, wonderful trek and um, it's on the west side, and I'll tell you more about where. But the reason I wanted to talk about interactive art is because I think there's one version of it that's pretty popular, and given that we designed it in April 2020, I wanted to take it deeper. So connectivity at every step is very important. So we wanted to talk about connectivity to the park. It was a commuter run park. How do we connect to the people? How do we connect to the material of the time? And then how do we connect to the natural world? This is Sheldon Heights Green Space Park. This is the site before the final, before bending light was installed. Again, so this was April 2020. So I'm out here awarded this commission and looking at this space like, wow, um, what's going on in the world? and there's this empty space here. So that was a great challenge, but also something that I'm pretty good at is um, creativity. So how did I go about this? Um, you know, like a designer, you know, what's great and what is a problem? So one of the problems is on the right where the empty space is, you know, people weren't going around there. It was really disconnected from the rest of the park. and. A positive um, part was that there were these existing benches all over, so great infrastructure already. And after talking to the park, I knew that I wanted to design for intergenerational families and, um, you know, a place for people to sit and while their children could run around. Um, another problem on the very left were these former electrical um, poles, so they were like decommissioned, but they were still in the ground, and they still had wires around them, so I knew something had to happen with that. And on the very left was this awesome native flower bed that Keep Indianapolis Beautiful planted. And Keep Indianapolis Beautiful commissioned myself along with Indianapolis Arts Council, because I previously um, worked with uh, dye from natural plants and nanotechnology, and I would fuse those two together um, on glass pieces. So, given that this was going to be in the public, I needed to, I wanted to do a few things, is have the color selections actually not be subjective. I knew that these colors were the colors of photosynthesis. Also, at the time, you know, what was happening in the world, there, it was just so confusing. So I'd go to the park and I'd look every morning and watch the sunrise and the sunset. And for me, that was just the grounding moment. And the park was really on this great east-west corridor. So I started to use light as my medium. Also, at the time, you all can probably remember those plexiglass sheets going up left and right. And it just was like, well, you know, that's kind of strange. And as an artist who's worked with reflection all the time, all I would see were the reflections and the bending light. People's, you know, faces like morphed and products morphed. And to me, that was interesting. So instead of glass, I moved to these plexiglass rods that I used, experimented with many years ago. And knowing that they could be, you know, last 10 years, stand up to the heat, and at the same time, it was a contemporary material. 
And as a contemporary artist, you know, that's really important to me. So we have color, we have material, and the natural world. As a artist, but also this is really my job, is to design the art, um, I knew a couple of things. I knew I was using light, I knew I had a budget, and when I was thinking of the material, I came across this sketch by architect Alvar Otto, and this was a, um, a, just like the perfect sketch. It's so simple, but it, the meaning in it to me is so big. So this is a sketch about um, the healing light in a hospital during the time of tuberculosis. So this actually greatly influenced architecture moving out into the balconies and getting um, health outside more. So when I saw that, you know, it had so much in there and also at the same time these straight lines. So I know there's a lot of graphic designers in here. And, you know, this is an unusual moment where the graphic actually turns into a sculpture for me is what ends up, um, you'll see the final piece. There's this interesting relation between graphic and sculpture. So here, this is a sunburst. I want everyone to be able to connect to art. For the last 10 years, I've really been working on how to bring, you know, um, Indiana crowds into art, and I always need a, a segue. So I wanted to use a really popular image, um, graphic design 101, like sunburst. So this is what I ended up with, and um, again, I didn't want to bend acrylic rods for budget restrictions and fabrication. So it's like, great, this is the straight line, and so much meaning. So instead, I thought instead of bending material, the acrylic can actually bend light itself. So I relied on the material to perform the bending and the refraction on its own. So the inherent thing that the material does. Here is the sight of bending light. Here is the total perspective. I mean, you, you can see these giant trees. And this is scale, so that's 30, um, the sunburst sculpture on the right is 30 feet tall. These are the reading stations, which I'll talk to you about in a moment. But here's sunburst, which is 30 feet tall, 16 feet wide, all has an area that you can step in and interact with it. Um, are the, here's a detail, because while the sunburst, you know, you can see it from very far away, like in the first picture, but you can also come up close with it and have this intimate relationship because the acrylic magnifies the paintings that I do on the other so underside of the sculpture. So far away and close up, and how can you kind of walk around the sculpture and develop an intimate viewing process with it. So, interaction. This is a great spot, um, so please go there and take your photo. There's some really cool stuff you can do with perspective. I also have the like, Rococo lights coming out of your head or your soul. So, this one, generally when we talk about interaction, you know, get in there, take a photo with that Instagram. Awesome. However, for me, thinking beyond that interaction was so important because kids were out of school for a year. And, you know, no one was really like, getting to get their educational programs and often it doesn't even have art in the first place. So while the kids were out of school, I also was working with my five year old with me at the time. Um, I focused on the potential for art to be conceptual educational and become a tool for demonstrating these concepts that aren't just in art, but they're actually in physics. Um, you know, physics is refraction. I call it bending light. In translation, it's actually not de Blano La Luz. That was kind of an accident. That means double light, which actually was perfect because this is all double light and bending light. So here this is the reading station. So you take out this publication and this box and you go to the reading station and 
I'll show you about the process. But here you can also see that the sculpture is on the former electrical base. So again, with budget, didn't want to get rid of it. And I said, how can we use this? Here is the publication that I designed um, after I realized I wanted to um, not only help families talk about like light and science, but also um, use this idea of the acrylic as a magnifier and oculus. This one here I designed with my friends at Commercial Artisan, and we worked with a scientist to talk about actually how light reflects so the cost graphic of the equinox, and then we have the um, how does light hit and travel across the sunburst, and then finally talking about human light on our bodies. And to the right, you can see we give a demonstration. Try this. Bring the um, publication to the sculpture and test it out. These are the graphics that actually do the light bending or showing. So um, this is my favorite part, and the, they're each designed with a book of the acrylic lens. And the graph paper actually, um, when you put it behind a rod, it becomes not a graph. It becomes wavy lines. And that's actually a space-time relationship, but that'll take me a long time to get here. So. Um, also, Shelton Heights, the tubular um, writing to the left of the graph that flips and you can read shelter and the hellos the hello there and the uh, arrows you know they're flipped so and one thing is like a material response educational and light i'm like a very um inside out backwards person so when i learn about science i feel like i'm learning about something else and i want people to enter science through art where some people need to enter art through science. So this was a great way to have that interaction, thinking about connectivity all the time. So here is the publication inside the reading rod. Um, as we call it actually reading stations, and this is the native brain behind there. So all the color from the publication um, is picked out from those native species. It's, I really um, designed it for kids. So you can see this rod bending, those lines on the diagonal, and now they're horizontal wavy lines. Some become wavy, some become flipped. And on the publication box, um, we put a acrylic rod as well so that we can keep the identity the same, but also it's a space to read it as well. Um, here's an example of the hello there, and on the back side of this publication, there's an actual leaf, printed image leaf, so we also encourage picking up grass and even looking at your hands through there. Um, I designed it for all bodies, all heights. Um, that's my child right there reading. And the important thing to me was keeping um, spatially, you know, connectivity. How, if you're at Sunburst, can you get a publication and go to the other side of the reading stations? So keeping a um, area for great flow. Um, it actually takes up one third of the park, the whole sculpture, and really became made that area come alive, um, which is great because it actually was in a very safe space before. And we had, there was a lot of um, crime and theft. So I had to really bolt, get this thing into the ground. And while, you know, this is bending light in the summer solstice sunset here, um, you know, it's got, you can see the light and see the rays, but also has a robust steel sculpture to um, keep all the parts together and Along that way, like for people in the community park, 
how does this happen? You know, this is in their park and this piece is in there. So how does this giant sculpture just end up there? Talking about connectivity, I wanted to bring them along the way here. So in the publication, we have this um, from inspiration to reality. You know, how does an idea come up with? Like, and how does it end up as a sculpture? So I wanted to bring the conversation of design into this park. So, you know, you can read that, oh, there's this sunburst idea, and maybe you think of that in the space, and then you have to come up with material. How do you pick out color? And this really helps draw everybody into the design process because I want that to be a transparent process. And so, thank you everybody for listening, and Studio Lauren Zoll, thank you. Thank you.